In the previous video, we were staring at a ripple tank, trying to figure out how would you know where each position would be uh, for a maxima or a minima. Now, if we have a diagram, it's easy. We can look at the diagram and see where the dark spots are and where the bright spots are. But if we don't have a diagram, we're kind of stuck. So today, we're going to summarize the ideas. How do you know exactly, you know, is there a calculation, an equation or something, whether the waves will add together also known as constructive interference, or whether the waves will cancel out, also known as destructive interference. Now let's go back to our diagrams. Earlier we said that, you know, if one source sends a wave, the other source sends a wave, they meet at a point. Now that point, we want to know whether it's a maxima or minima, you need to know, um, is the wave at a crest or is it at a trough? Now let me illustrate that a little bit with this simulation. Okay, so this is representing the source 1 and source 2. There's a lot of waves, but we're going to look at one path that the wave takes. So in this case, the path, wave A will take this pink color path on top to travel and reach this point here. Source B, releasing a lot of waves, but we're only going to look at one path this blue wave takes to reach this red point. Now, if you notice the wave, uh, when they reach here at this red, po red point, they are both kind of in phase. So, I don't know what happened in between, but when they meet, they are in phase. Is there a place where they meet out of phase? Let's try and find it. Ah, uh, that one looks kind of out of phase. Let's see. I think I like the top point. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. All right. So at this specific position, because of a different path that they take now, look at what's happening here. The blue wave, the first one on top, is trying to go down after this. Whereas the pink wave is trying to go up. So, uh-oh, at this point, they are going to meet out of phase. They're going to cancel each other out. Okay, so at different points, depending on how far they travel, to meet, like here, they are together again. Uh, let's go down here. I think they cancel out again. You see that? Pink is on top, blue is below. They are out of phase. And when we go a little bit down further, I think they will be in phase again. Yeah, something like that. They are both going upwards, they are in phase. So it's something to do with the path length and how many wavelengths can fit into that length. So let's go and summarize that on the paper. So let's say we have source A and source B, like what we saw just now. Source A travels a certain distance in CM. We can measure that in real life, okay? Because we can see the CM. Let's call this length one. Source B is going to travel a certain distance. Length two for the path. Huh? We're looking at the path length. And they meet at, let's say we want to study this point. Are they going to cancel or add together? At this point, let's call this point P. Okay, so I'm going to take these two waves and kind of redraw them, a sample scenario in the space here below. Let's put this here. All right, so let's add some dotted lines. And let's have the first wave start, let's say, on top. Okay, so from the highest position, this wave is going to go down and up, and down and up, and down and up. Okay, not the smoothest, but eh, get the idea. Okay, so we have a second source also, so let's draw the second path. Okay, remember, I take these two paths and I separate them. Okay, I take this one. And I take this one and then I arrange it. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, second source. Maybe it's a little bit shorter path that it traveled. Because you see this is a triangle. Maybe the second one is short by, let's say, one wavelength. But they are still in phase in this case. Okay, so means I'm going to start here. Let's start at the highest point. Let's start on top. And in phase means what? The first wave, it goes down first. Okay, so my second wave also have to go down first. So we go, oops, change color. Down and up. And down and up. 
Okay. Let's check. Is this in phase or not? Yes, it starts and it goes down. So just a quick reminder, you might want to write here. In phase means your phase difference at the beginning uh, is zero degree of the source. Remember this, we're looking at the source, this part, the starting point. Okay, and what, what in phase means is it moves down, in this case, down together. All right, now the waves travel, 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 travel. Eventually, they both will meet at point P. So let's call the end point here, point P. So they meet at P. Okay, let's check. What are they now? So wave A, let's call this A, is going to a crest, it's the highest point. Wave B also going to a crest, the highest point. Ah, so do you think they'll add together or not? Yes, they will add. So here you can consider the first wave will be a crest. Second wave will also be a crest when they meet at point P. I don't know if I draw this correctly. Yeah, something like that. Lah. Okay. And what you can take note is they didn't have the same length. There is some path difference. Let's draw that out. So path difference is this section right here. Okay, we're going to use the symbol here, delta L. Remember the length traveled, right? So wave 1, travel a distance of L1. Um, Maybe, I don't know, 20 cm or how many cm, who knows? Second path of the wave traveled L2. Don't know how many cm, lah, but the difference in the length here, well, let's give it numbers. Let's say this is 10 cm, and this one is 8 cm. One wavelength, don't know, two wavelength, three wavelength. Okay, so the difference in this case, for example, will be 2 cm. Get the idea? Difference, ah, you travel how many cm. But in terms of wavelength, this path difference will be one full wavelength. How do you know it's one full wavelength? Here, yeah, one cycle. From the top, go down, come up. One wavelength. So for any wave, as long as the path difference is one wavelength, it's definitely going to be a constructive interference. So let's summarize that. So path difference will definitely be, well, either one wavelength or zero wavelength. Zero means like this. They both start and travel the same distance, then of course la, it's still the same. La. There's no not going to be any out of phase stuff. So here it's going to be multiples of lambda. So either you have zero path difference, zero cm, or one wavelength, or two wavelength, or two wavelength will look like how? Two wavelength will look like this. So you have two gaps, and it's still in phase. Okay, keep that there. Three wavelength. So many, right? All the multiples of wavelength, as long as it is a whole wavelength. So whole wavelength. Okay? Now, in terms of phase difference, you can convert this to phase difference as well. Remember? Angles, wavelength. So in this case, if you want to compare what is the phase difference, that will be Full wavelength is what? 360 degrees. Okay, so in this case, you can put phase difference. Can be 0 degrees or 360 degrees or what's that? 360 plus 360 is 720 degrees and so on and so forth. Full cycles. Okay, so that's the lag between the waves. So I'm going to write a reminder here. This represents the lag. Path difference represents the difference in path. So that will be L2 minus L1. Or the other way around. L1 minus L2, whichever one. Huh? Okay. So that's the very first part for this. Now, what if they are cancelling each other out? Ah, that's destructive interference. Maybe the wave travel, travel, and they cancel each other out. Let's see. How would we write that? 
Now let's keep the same setup for wave number one, like just now. You know, this wave A is going to start from the bottom and travel. And when they reach point P at the end, that will be right here. P. And it should be, we'll keep the same setup, it's going upwards at point P. Okay, this is for wave A. Now wave B though, we got, okay, let's compare both. How would you change the path so that wave B will now cancel out point uh, wave A at the source? Let me redraw the old one first. Huh? Okay, something like that. So previously, you start on the highest point like this and go down, up, down, up. You end up up at point P. If you meet at the point. Now you still kind of meet at point P right here. So we want them to cancel up. I think we got to make the distance shorter. So I can do this because I'm a computer. I'm going to drag the wave around like this. Ooh, okay. Okay, 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 okay. So let's drag, let's change the path difference. So now we said path difference is a full wavelength, right? On the left side. Let's make it so we can cancel out. So maybe I move this forward a little bit somewhere here. Hmm, I think this might work. Let's check. Will they cancel out or not? So the wave starts in source. Highest point and going down. A is also highest point, moving down. It goes down, up, down, up. Oh, you look how they meet at point P. Wave A says, let's go up. It's a crest. But wave B says, no, no, no. Let's go down. Ah, this is where they don't agree. This is where they will fight, fight, fight. So wave A is a crest at point P. But wave B will be a trough at point P. So, what is the resultant? At point P, they are going to cancel out. This is what we call destructive interference. They cancel out. That's where a minima will occur. Alright, so let's add the path difference here. This path difference, if I may label this, is half of a wavelength. How do you know it's half a wavelength? Well, full wavelength is like this, down and up. So half a wavelength means you only go down. Okay, uh, more or less, lah, my drawing is a bit out of shape. But here, this delta L path difference is going to be half a wavelength. That's why at the end, they will meet and cancel out. So let's summarize that here. So path difference, remember what path difference is? The difference in length, difference in path. This one will have definitely be a half or a 0 0.5 of a wavelength. Next one, if you go one cycle later, it'll be 1.5 of wavelength, 2.5 of wavelength. Okay, many 0 0.5, 0 0.5, like, as long as it's a 0 0.5, means these waves will cancel each other out when they meet. So path, uh, phase difference then, how about in terms of angle? So phase difference, this would be half a cycle, so 180 degrees. So if you want to check the conditions, you got to try to find the phase difference between the waves at that point, P, right here, and say, oh no, one wave is going up, one wave is going down. They are out of phase. So here, it's either 180 degrees, or if you add 360, that will be 540 degrees, so on and so forth. Because waves keep repeating. Uh. Just one cycle, two cycle, three cycle, on and on. Okay, so these two are very important. Of course, you need to know how to apply them in questions, and we'll do that in the example videos. But please know the basic of how to check, based on the CM length, uh, whether these waves will cancel or meet at a certain point. Oh, let me add one more word here. If they move together, means they are in phase. When they don't move together, that means they are out of phase. And if there are constructive interference happening at that point, means that point P is a maxima. 
also known as antinode, we called it previously. If destructive interference occur at point P, then we can say that point P is where a minima occurs. It's called a minima. No light, no wave, nothing, all cancel out already. Okay, so that's the main basics to know for today. And I say, Miss, what about this thing down here? Ah, that's for the bonus video. That is a case where sometime Cambridge will twist the question a little bit. And they say, well, we use sources in phase most of the time. It means the wave start off going down. Wave B also start off going down. But what if they start out of phase? So if you're curious to know that case, what if the other, the, the two ways start off out of phase, do check out the bonus video. But that's all for this video today. See you in examples on the next video.